All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. This is a, just uh, an update about the news we hear uh, every day, which is kind of funny and weird. Uh, if you remember, I just made a video about uh, the death of this uh, ex-terrorist, uh, and today he is uh, a, a very good active person for uh, the sake of uh, humanity and mankind. And he is a journalist in the Washington Post, which is a, a very humanized organization run by the left. And obviously, this is why they hire him, because he is a terrorist. Uh, this guy, Jamal Khashoggi, supposedly, uh, he was uh, he entered the Saudi embassy. I think most of you, you know what happened. And then he disappeared, and obviously, he was killed inside. And now, the news is coming, as we said yesterday. That it doesn't matter really what happened nothing would happen now the saudi embassy um, today they open their doors for the turkish the uh, government uh, police and uh, d detectives etc all kind of um, fake stupid stuff which is not really true the saudi and the turkey they will make this happen in a good way uh, or what they will do now they will say yes he was killed in the embassy mm -hmm. but he was killed under unauthorized investigation uh, mostly he was killed uh, by accident uh, and mostly we gave him a drink uh, which is supposedly supposed to be tea but it's made by the Jews and he died and you know we told the embassy before not to serve the meat by the Jews. Look what happened to the Prophet Muhammad himself. He himself died by poison. So at the end of the day, they will claim the Jews. And you will see soon that many, they will say that behind what happened to this guy, it was the Jews. And I will not be surprised for this. But the point of the title I just made here, that they killed him, they cut him pieces, they made him whatever, you know, they throw him in the sewage. Uh, but at the end of the day, nothing would happen to Saudi Arabia and nobody would care. For a very simple reason, the Saudi, they can't punish everybody who tried to punish them by the oil. And because of that, all the world leaders who they are now going to hear the news that, yes, we did it, and what you can do about it, they will shut up their mouth and they will do nothing. The news now saying that they are preparing to make an announcement that yes, he was killed in the embassy, but the king he have nothing to do with this. He don't even know the crown prince. He have no idea. He don't even know. And what they will do? They will say, "We promise you to make justice come to existence. Those who did this crime, we will punish them, and they will punish them." <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know when you are just a little uh, soldier or an employee in a in a in a in a royal family who owned a country. Ima imagine the whole country it's called Saudi Arabia, which means have you ever heard of a country have the last name of the king? <laughs> the country is like a farm; they own it, including the citizen. So what they will do now? They will make themselves. They have nothing to do with this. This is a bunch of idiots who work in the embassy did this crime. And we will punish them. That's it. Just shut up. But all of us, we knew. And everybody, all the leaders of those who claim to be leaders in this world today, they knew that in those countries, nobody dared to do anything, especially such like a, such a person. This guy is very well known to the royal family. He worked with them before. He worked in the government. He worked in the embassy. Uh, uh, he is a close to Osama bin Laden, which is, was the friend of the CIA, friend to the royal family during the war in Afghanistan. He was supporting the Mujahideen in El Bosnia to kill as many Christians as he can. And he killed a lot of people. And now he ends in the sewage. So the end of the story will be very predictable that the royal family, they will say, we have nothing to do with it. And now you will see every leader in the world will jump to defend the royal family and they will say well there is no proof that they are involved and here we go they are doing justice those who killed him they will be taken into court and they will be facing jail time but we know that this is not really true it is a problem this uh, crown prince obviously he is very aggressive very stupid 
and he did something he regret for sure now but he never thought is going to be exposed and I think the Turkish government they have uh, you know they are spying on the on the Saudi I don't believe in the the, the the Apple watch that it was recording all this garbage I don't believe in it because simply when you enter into an embassy especially those vicious embassy especially for a person who is going to be executed so they are they start executing him and he is wearing the watch they will never do that especially it's a smart uh, watch secondly those uh, those uh, you know like uh, embassies when they do a special let us say interrogation or meeting all embassies in the world they have a special rooms which no radiation can go out no connection can get in with not even the phone your cell phone will not work so all this garbage about uh, apple phone i believe strongly somebody who worked in the embassy he got paid heavily and he leaked some maybe recording or audio or etc and that exposed the crime and make the saudi unable to deny it or it might be the cia you know the cia uh, they played their games and then maybe now it's time to uh, to uh, uh, you know to make the Saudi like more subdued to USA because now the Saudi they need a Trump badly in order to protect them from the outcome of this yes they are they have oil but still is going to be an outcome the world will hate them so they need someone who can at least stay to protect them they do not need anything except the protection and this is what can america can do to the to the royal family in saudi arabia and they are not doing that as a favor everything paid everything there is there is an exchange of benefit you know uh, 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 the saudi they are helping trump to make the sanctions more strong in iran he need them badly in this uh, process uh, to control the 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 oil price and already actually the oil price is, is getting up just because uh, they are saying we you know they are going to announce or they admit that they are the one who killed this guy so what will happen is nothing whoever killed this guy they will take them to jail the crown prince who is he is the one who investigate with him i, I think he will say i have nothing to do with it the king he never heard of it and Trump, he don't know what it is. And the, the the president of France, he will say, see, the king, he have nothing to do with it. Those are a bunch of employees in the embassy. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Always, you know, always in this kind of things, you will be the victim when you are the poor. You see, those who they are working, let us say, for the uh, intelligence of the Saudi Arabia, uh, those officers who they send them to execute this man, and to investigate uh, him they are just doing orders orders of who of the crown prince obviously such a person nobody even would dare to touch him unless it's coming from a very high level in the kingdom of saudi arabia and that must be the crown prince you know this guy is young he's a stupid uh, he thinks that's uh, you know he can do whatever he wants because previously the saudi they kidnapped many uh, royal family princes not only this guy I mean even their family they could map them you can go right now and search on YouTube and you will see how many royal uh, by the way when I say royal don't believe me I mean they are they are they are Bedouin they are they have nothing to do with royal none of them been a king before this family is made by the rich intelligent all the royal family they, they call them royal family in the Middle East they are Bedouin who used to take a shower once every 10 years but because of the British intelligent, who they, they need someone to present them. So they made the king of Jordan, the, his grandfather, they made him uh, the Honorable Ash-Sharif Hussain, the Honorable Hussain, which why? Because supposedly he claimed that he is descendant from the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. And because those Abdul Muslims are, you know, they are like small, naive people. So the British intelligence were able to convince them that this guy, he is descendant from the Prophet. And now we will, it is time for you to have a king. He's an Arab. Get rid of the Turkish. 
and this is how the intelligent at that time of the of her majesty the queen they were able to and for sure if i don't know if how many of you knows about uh, the guy who his name is lawrence lawrence who is supposedly dressing as an arabian this guy is a real person is not a you see him in the movie there is a movie it's called the lawrence of the arab you see him in the movie it's a movie yeah but it is a real real person this is a real person this is a intelligent person who was sent by the british intelligent in order to create a revolution against the turkish and he taught those uh, bedouin who do not know how to fight you using a, a new weapon who do not know how to do bombs or he taught them whatever they need and then they were able to make this person the bedouin man from mecca they made him a king for the arab they brought him to jordan they brought him to jerusalem and then they divide uh, this guy he have three kids so we divided we divided to three kingdoms iraq syria jordan etc so and then we when it's time you know they those guys they, they expired and they are gone the only one is still there is the king of jordan and he is there for a reason to protect the borders of israel but everything we see around us always uh, uh, you know it have an expire date like you know the saudi family they are there until there is the date for them to be used is going to be expired and as long the western they need them they will stay there and specifically these days you see england is not the, the powerful country as before the army of england today is not even sixty thousand, which means they cannot even respond to any war and they are not capable of going in any war they are very weak uh the liberals in england they uh they made their uh, army very limited so it's not the same as the uk before or let us say the, the britain the greater britain today is a small britain full of immigrant and uh, british people are not really controlling themselves as you see the mayor of london he is not even a british you know i, I mean <laughs> he is he is a, a guy from pakistan um even the, the the Commonwealth countries, like right now, the 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 Minister of Immigration in Canada is a Muslim, so you can imagine what that will do to Canada. So you know uh, those liberals, they destroy, they are self destruction people, and they they lost it. So today, the only country who have a leader who can really make a difference for any any in any way, like different for bad or good, is America, and that is a Trump. Uh, before all those presidents who they used to be in usa at the end of the day they are employees of somebody else they are the president of the greatest country in the world that is uh, that is say as power but at the same time they are you know hired like george bush um uh, you know reagan uh, billy clinton uh, all of them obama there is no difference between them all of them at the end of the day they are just employees of somebody else and they have a business to do trump is a is a business only person which means he made it clear america come first so you want me to protect you i will protect you but you have to pay me and the price is going to be very high and this is what will happen now the saudi trump he sent his uh, foreign minister to us uh, to, to saudi arabia and i am sure there is going to be a deal how we can get out of this how mr president we need your help how we can get out of this and how we can stay strong by your help for sure there will be a secret deal to protect the saudi family as usual and actually i believe strongly that none of the american want the saudi royal family um, or let us say the bedouin family to lose their control of saudi arabia because the outcome is going to be ugly the one who will control it might be someone totally totally uh, support uh, like support person of ISIS or have the same mentality. Um, so it's for for their benefit to keep this royal family there, and I believe it's for their benefit to keep the royal the, the crown prince there, because this you see, you see the crown prince is because he's stupid. It's always for the benefit your benefit to have a stupid leader. You see Israel they always benefit of having a stupid Arab leaders around them. Imagine if the Israeli have a smart leaders around them. That's very, very bad news to Israel. So this is a perfect person. This is why I believe the American, they will defend his existence. 
they will defend the existence of the, his father too and they will defend the existence of the family of al saud in in saudi arabia for they cannot buy you know they cannot find better stupid family than this family corrupt garbage you know criminals they have no ethic everything is for sale everything for buy um they say something they do something they are perfect you know this is a perfect environment to be in control of any country and now saudi arabia will own trump big deal because they need him they need his help they need they have the oil yes they have the protection for themselves because of the oil but still they are going to face a severe uh, uh you know a climate around them people they will be disgusted and uh, people who work in politics they have to be careful now how to deal with saudi arabia because the public is watching and they have to make some act on the stage that they are really going to punish saudi arabia but at the end of the day nothing will happen especially as long as america don't go to punish saudi arabia the rest they will not there canada just a few day a few weeks ago they uh, they um, you know i think it was the foreign minister of canada or something post a post in a twitter and the result of that the saudi they cancel all their business with canada they kicked out of this uh, canadian uh, uh, ambassador and they order all their students to leave canada immediately and they they would draw all the investment from canada for just a twitter just for a tweet and the Canadian lost big deal really from this uh, movement. Uh, so the Saudi they can do that to all of European countries, and I wish they would do that because that will free the European from being the slaves of the money of the Arab, the Prince of Qatar, the royal family of Saudi Arabia. They are really involving heavily in controlling Europe and the West. So I don't think anything will happen. I think Trump is going to protect them, and I understand why he will protect them. Because at the end of the day, it's for his benefit, for the benefit of USA to keep them there. As I said, they are corrupt, they are stupid, they are savage, and that will make them perfect to control. You see, in the Middle East, and I am a Middle Eastern, as you know, we cannot have democracy. Democracy is very dangerous. Imagine you live in a country where people do not even know what democracy is. You see, if you, if you notice, you know, we live in America, right? And I don't know how many of you are, are American. When Trump, he won the election, the left, they start burning cars, smashing windows, attacking people in the street. This is in America. So imagine in the Middle East what it is. You know what I'm talking about? So if a bunch of idiots from the left, they were able to brainwash Millions of people and made them go to the street and start burning cars because how you say day and night you believe in democracy and then when somebody from the other side when you start burning cars. If this is what the American does after losing election, what Arab and that they are my people they will do if we have election. If you don't believe me, what will happen? Go and see what happened in Egypt. Go and see what happened in Libya. Go and see what happened in Iraq. Go and see freedom is not really good not in those countries the, the the second you say freedom there it's mean people will be kidnapped in the street the street is not going to be safe for anyone even to do shopping to bring your grocery you will not have a president staying there for long you will not have a government you will not have a police you will not have anything the country will go in chaos since we took saddam hussein out of office and we'll replace it with the elected government. What happened to Iraq? Go and read the news today. Today is just today news in Iraq. And yesterday, and the day before, and the day before, and the day before. And you will see Iraq is messed up for the coming thousand year. For a very simple reason. Because there is democracy. And democracy, it is not a recipe. It's not a, a, a drugs prescription for everybody. It doesn't fit with everybody. Those are Middle Eastern, especially the majority are Muslims, and Muslims don't fit with democracy. So uh, uh, the royal family in Saudi Arabia are perfect to keep that territory under control. Otherwise, you will have just another Iraq, another Syria, another Libya, another, 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 you know. Uh,
Uh, no, Iraq is uh, Iraq is messed up since uh, since Saddam Hussein lost. You see, so when Saddam Hussein was there, because he's a dictator, he controlled the country. You see, this is what what people don't understand that dictators in the Middle East is a must. It's a must. It's not a choice. It's not. You see, if I live in the Middle East now, if me myself, if I'm still in the Middle East, I would like to have the uh, 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 a dictator over democracy. Because uh, as I, I told you, those people there don't understand what democracy is. There's a tribes, there is a, a special interest, there is etc. People they will eat each other, and the and the big fish will eat the small fish as it used always to be. So you cannot have democracy in those countries. Otherwise, you are just planning to burn those countries in fire. You see, the American they went to Afghanistan and they made election. Look how funny this election is. <laughs> After 20 years in Afghanistan, you don't have democracy and you will never have democracy. So they don't, you know, the Western, they think they can do to Iraq the same as they did to Germany after the, the World War II. But this is Germany and those are German. Those are not Arab and they are not Muslims. So they don't understand how it is in the Middle East. But I'm sure after all this long, many years, dealing with the Middle East, they understand now. There is one of two choices. Either you hire a dictator and that will bring stability or you bring democracy and that will burn those countries. And I believe in this stage now, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Saudi uh, family, they are the best to establish uh, a stable position in that territory, especially USA preparing to put heavy sanctions on Iran. And maybe even later, they might launch uh, heavy strikes on them. I will not be surprised if Trump, before the end of the coming election, you know, uh, which means before he leave the office, he strike Iran heavily, and he do something nobody did before, uh, uh, because you know the sanctions of uh, Trump on Iran. If he was able to force the Turkish, and I think now the Turkish they are very weak, and they are going to obey Trump like puppies. Uh, their economy is is really garbage. Um, you know, they they need any anything to save them, and Iran cannot save them. Uh, and Trump here is going to put sanctions on anyone who do business do business with them, which means the Turkish cannot afford really to have sanctions on them themselves. So the Turkish will close their borders, and he will force them to do so. Uh, he might be able to make the Russian do that too if he is smart enough. And then the Turkish, the, the Iranian regime is going to collapse. The country will be burning from inside. The people will start going in the street, hungry. You see, you can control nation as long as they are not hungry. The second hunger strike, the stomach, people, they, lo they lose their mind. You can give me speeches. I can laugh at Hillary. I can laugh at Trump. I can laugh at, uh, I can laugh and you can laugh. As long you are not hungry. The second your children are hungry, the second you cannot pay for your fuel, for your food, to heat your children, you go out of control. And this is what will happen in Iran. So now for what, what is going to happen with this guy, and this is uh, the crime they did against him, it's just additional crime. I mean, those people, they kidnap people always. You see, nobody is questioning Obama for the $600 billion he sent to terrorists in Syria. I mean... Who, what what difference it doesn't make if we kill them by our hand or we kill them by somebody we hire? So the Saudi, the crown prince, he hires some of his police to kill this guy. Obama, he sent John McCain. He met with the bunch of terrorists in Syria and he promised them a lot of money and weapon and the weapon deliver and the money was delivered. And those people, what they do with those weapons? They kill people too. They killed the Christians, they killed Muslims, they killed everybody. They killed women, they raped women and the children, they kidnapped them, they made the slaves, they have a slave market. The friends of Obama. So the world is full of hypocrisy, hypocrisy and people, they don't really point, point their finger at the really criminal. They point their finger at the one who shot with the gun. But this is just a guy who is doing the order. The really criminal is the one who ordered him, who bought him the gun, who gave him the gun, who told him to do it. You know what I mean? Uh, 
and now we will see. You will see. You know, like uh, let us see what will happen tomorrow. The Saudi they will say, okay, it happened in our embassy, and it was an authorized investigation, and uh, you know they were investigating uh, that he have a money fraud, blah blah blah. He did not report, blah 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 blah. But uh, you know, but it wasn't shouldn't be this way, and we are going to punish the one who did that. As simple as that. And then Trump, he will insist and he will uh, be consistent. He will say, yes, the king, he do not know. The crown prince, he do not know what we can do. This happened and they will punish the guy. That's what will happen. Um, so so uh, uh, for the one who is uh, excited that the Turkish uh, uh, and the Saudi soon, they will announce that the crime, yes, happened and this guy was killed. And that's supposed to will bring a big chaos in Saudi Arabia. I don't think anything will happen. Is going to have an impact, let us say, a negative impact in the reputation of Saudi Arabia. But remember, people have short memory. Yesterday, you know, 9/11 was there, and people, the world, the whole world, forgot about it. Three thousand people burned alive. Eh, they forgot about it. The war in Iraq, they forgot about it. The, you know, uh, people, they forget. I mean, uh, what a big deal. Uh, so. Uh, and the media, when they want, they can kill any uh, any like they say they make you forget things. The media, they can they can make bring th things to your memory, or they can make you forget it. All what the Saudi they need to do. Actually, the Saudi already they have a lobbyist organization. I forgot what the name I, before I saw it. Um, uh, Saudi lobby USA. Let's see what is the name. Um, yeah, I need to find it, but because I remember they, they have an organization, they have a name officially, you know, so they have a lobby. Uh, uh, if you remember when the liberals they try they start fighting uh, uh, any, any idea, especially at Trump, that we should not draw, should not uh, drill looking for oil, the, fra uh, the fracking uh, method is very damaging, cause cancer. Uh, health environment water will be poisoned all of this behind it there is an investigation about it in youtube you can go and watch it they they send hiding camera they recorded them all of this was behind it it was the saudi so the saudi they tried with their lobbyist which is organization who do commercial for them they do advertising for them they do and the advertising doesn't mean they advertise for the royal family no they do for things serve the agenda of the saudi so they they did they spend hundreds of millions of dollars to convince the naive American that if you drill for oil, that will cause you cancer and you will die, because that will poison the water, and you will not be able to live good, and the air will be polluted, and you are going to die you and your family because of cancer, and Trump will bring you cancer. This is why the Saudi they were in favor of Hillary Trump because she is very corrupt. And she is in their in their pocket. Trump, by opening the energy resource, he did really hurt the Saudi badly. Not only the Saudi, all the uh, the business of uh, uh, all the countries who sell oil and gas and etc. Uh, so they spend a lot of money to convince the American to vote against the fragging for oil in USA. And uh, they got exposed and they failed. And Hillary Clinton, she lost. Thanks God. Because if Hillary Clinton, she won, the first thing she would do is to serve her masters. She will stop drilling for oil. She will stop the pipe between uh, Canada and USA. She will stop any kind of energy resource ad additional to the oil or the gas. And uh, she will make America again dependent on the Saudi and other foreign countries oil and this is exactly what the Saudi they want they want to be in control of America by using their oil now the Saudi they are in control of other countries but not in America in America America now is in control of the Saudi and this incident now is going to give Trump another powerful tool over the Saudi to make them more subdued and do what he want so now I'm sure there is an, a deal is going to be, I'm sure it's done already, between the uh, the foreign minister of Trump and the Saudi about what we will do with this, how we how we can get you out of it, and what you will pay us for, for, for this. 
and I can imagine that maybe in a few months from now the Saudi they will fly over to USA and they will sign a deal to buy another 100 billion dollar weapon deal which is just to say thank you to Trump which is thank you but it's not a choice you have to you know it's you have to deal he now he is holding them from their arms and they need him so uh, I don't think anything will happen and you see you will soon you will see like I heard that the vice president of some companies they be caught to go to a conference in Saudi Arabia you're right with a big deal if you are a man stop doing business with them be a man all those company vice president who said we be caught going to a conference what the conference would do I mean what <laughs> this is a hypocrisy what about selling your stop selling your cars to them let us see if you can do that let us see if General Electric will stop selling any equipment or anything any 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 machines they make to you to Saudi Arabia or let us see if uh, 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 you know Italian companies will do the same French company UK company. that's garbage you know the Saudi even they are buying weapon to kill thousands and thousands of Yemeni civilians in Yemen and yet the European they, they still sell them weapon I mean <laughs> look at the hypocrisy so now you are angry for a guy but your feeling did not move for thousands and thousands of civilians who died in Yemen who was killed by the royal family of Saudi Arabia that is garbage and we know that this game is not really is not a true game it's just a, it's a it's an act it's a theater and you know the naive one they uh, uh, you know they believe what they see in TV and they have to do some act now after the Saudi they announce that this is what happened they will they will make some noise some smoke and then everybody go home right so uh, I don't think anything will happen I think things will be fine and uh, I, I if I am you I will go and buy some gas put it in my car because I guess tomorrow the price of gas will increase even even though there's nothing will happen you know I think already is going to increase so if you are in the street buy some gas at least for the coming two weeks you know what I mean because the second the Saudi they announced they will announce that they are the one who did it is going to have an impact in the price of of oil and uh, you better have some some gas in your car uh, but after that maybe two weeks from now everybody go home everything is fine and people will forget about this uh, garbage and you know nobody care right yeah all the families in the Middle East are criminals I mean the Saudi are the same what about the Prince of Qatar the Prince of Qatar he put his father in jail <laughs> not this guy his father you know the father of this guy who is the the previous Prince of Qatar his father went in a vacation he came back in the airplane before he go down in the airport they arrested him they put him in a box and they took him to his bedroom and since then nobody saw him you know those people they don't have they, you know my friend I am from the Middle East I know what it is those people they are the last to trust they betray their own shadow they betray their own shadow who is the one who killed Uthman ibn Affan they they did they did who is the one who launched war against Ali the cousin of Muhammad the one who is married to his daughter supposedly Aisha family you know the family <laughs> You know what I mean? It's nothing new. This is this is how they are. This is why they will never be one. They will never they will never be something. They will never be a nation because they are nations who are full of corruption. When they when they uh, the caliphate of Uthman ibn Affan, not only they killed him. You see, I will not be surprised if they if the Saudi police they did to uh, Khashoggi the same as they did to Uthman, but the difference is Uthman he have a bigger beard. And it was more harmful. The uh, Uthman ibn Affan, they pulled the hair of his beard one by one. One by one, non stop. And then after they finished torturing him, uh, they cut his head and they play volleyball with it. And, and then they, they drag his body in the streets around. And then after the kids start finishing playing with it as if it's a dead cat, you know, uh, 
they refused to bury him between the Muslims. So at night, some of the friends of Uthman they came in secret, secretly, and they took the body and they bury it with the Jews, with the Jews, not with the Muslims, because they were afraid if they knew that they bury him with the Muslims, those guys will be killed. Uh, so nothing changed. It is the same. You know, the king of Jordan is the same garbage. He is a terrorist. He is a criminal. Just go to Jordan right now and say one word about the king. You and your family will disappear. Everybody know that. Uh, it's the same. It's the same. Go to Egypt. Go, uh, you name it. This is how it is in the Middle East, my friend. So when somebody says to you that they are... Uh, 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 there is going to be an investigation and uh, soon we will find out you will find out what we know what happened and this happened always in the Middle East <laughs> always <laughs> I mean, you know, when I say always I honest to God always every second you know uh, if I tell you things you will not believe it I mean things which hilarious to, to even to believe but those people, they uh, all dictator countries, it doesn't matter by the way, not only Islamic countries, they focus in the image of the leader, whoever the leader is. His picture is everywhere, his name is everywhere, and the, the radio station, the TV station, the newspaper, everybody praising him, the same as Muhammad, you know. So, in order to, to control your mind, to make you believe that there's no other one can do what, what this guy is doing. So wherever you go, like uh, in Cuba, you know, you go to uh, in, uh, during the Soviet Union. So the the leader image have to be in every wall, every classroom for children, even the the, the the kindergarten, everywhere. Since you are a child, you will not see anyone except this guy. He is your daddy. And this is what you see right now in Korea. You know the the and the president he died, and we give the, his son the the job, etc. Because they own you, they, they own the country. You know, you are just a, you are like a cow. You know, they own the whole country. Uh, and Saudi Arabia, uh, it's not only like those dictator countries. The whole country is having their name. I mean, the whole country is Saudi Arabia. <laughs> what is the name of the country? Saudi. What? How you call it Saudi? Because the king last name is Saudi. So imagine, you know, your name is uh, uh, Muhammad Baloni. And then they are okay, and now you became a king to your country, and you call it what? You call it baloney country. I mean, this is this is this is how they don't respect their people, how much those people are nothing for them. To the point you name the country by your last name. So imagine uh, uh, Hillary Clinton when she became a president, and thanks God she is not. Then we changed the name of the country to make it the United States of Hillary. It's possible in the Middle East. You can do that. Who dare? I mean, who dare to say to the president, whoever he is, or a king, you cannot do that. Nobody. Who Who is going to do that? Just try. Just try. Uh, and this guy, he is a, a member in the Muslim Brotherhood, a member of Al-Qaeda. He's a terrorist. Uh, but he was useful for the Saudi for a long time. He was the middle guy between them and Osama bin Laden, as an example, to negotiate with him. Uh, he was, uh, uh, you know, always the middleman, the same as Qatar. Like uh, just just uh, uh, two days ago, USA and Taliban they met by the help of Qatar in Qatar. I mean, why we are discussing Trump? He keeps saying to the, to, to us, we don't negotiate with terrorists. In the same time, you are meeting with Taliban. That is really a hypocrisy, but they are at the end of the day, uh, American. They will do what is for their benefit. You know, they say things, they do things, and sometimes they say what they don't do, and they do what they don't say. Uh, but Qatar never stopped the relationship with Taliban, and their embassy of Taliban is still uh, until now the center of Taliban. Since the time of Osama bin Laden, never been closed in uh, uh, in Qatar. Uh, so, you know, there is a lot of evil things happening around us. But what we think that we live in a perfect world where there is justice, and if somebody commit a crime, he will be punished. You will be punished for your crime only if you are poor, if you are no one. 
if you are no one if you even drive without a belt you might go to jail if you are no one if you cross the the, the red uh, light you you go to jail you lose your job you know you go to court the judge will punish you will humiliate you for you are obviously a bad person but if you are a powerful person you can kidnap people you can rape you can do whatever you want uh, the history of uh, of uh, of Saudi royal family kidnapping people, raping women, raping even men. You know, there's a there's a Saudi prince in the UK. Um, he killed his boyfriend. You know, he's a gay. He killed his boyfriend, and uh, I don't know what happened after that. But there is tons tons of cases. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, they rape their maids, they kill them, they throw them in the in the desert. Uh, do you remember anyone remember what happened uh, to the guy from Pakistan who did supposed to steal money from his boss, which is the brother of the Prince of Emirat? Go watch the video. You know, there's a video about it in YouTube. Life, I mean, this is the recorded life, what he's doing to them. He was torturing him. He put salt in his anus. He hit him with the, a piece of wood, have a nail in it. He uh, he ran over him by his uh, for uh, for a drive car. He shot between his legs, you know, terrifying him with his clashing cough. And he and the prince himself, he he is the one who asked him to record this. I mean, and the policemen, they are the one who is holding this guy down so the prince he can torture him. This is why when somebody says to me, "I'm going to work in Emirat," I I feel sorry for you. Uh, honestly, you don't know what you are doing. What if something happened to you there? You know, what? Or or uh, Qatar, or Bahrain, or Saudi Arabia. You see, there is people who they are from, let us say, strong citizenship, but because those princes they own, they, they 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 invest heavily in England, they invest heavily in France, in USA. So at the end of the day, your, your, your government might not go to save you, to help you, because they are involved, they are with them in the bed. Uh, so what about if you are a Pakistani guy or an Indian guy, which means considered to be, with my respect to everybody, you are a poor citizen. You see, when you are poor, everybody rape you, everybody they torture you. If you, go, if you go to Saudi Arabia, you will see 50 Indian, they put them in one room. And then when an American, he have one apartment. But both of them, they are employee in the same company. Just because this guy is an American and those guys are Indian, so the Indian, we put them in shelves in the top of each other. And the American, we put them in a nice apartment, every individual by his own, and even we give him a car. This is the, this is the fact which nobody want to talk about. It. The slavery today, you know, is exists. You go to Qatar, uh, Qatar they, they, they bribe <coughs> the... Uh, when, they, when they vote where they will do the... Uh, what they call it, the international football game, whatever. I don't know which year. Anyway, they win supposedly, and uh, go and see uh, what what's happening to those poor employees who's coming from Philippines, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan. And by the way, this is not about Muslim and Christian. Those people they humiliate everybody. And Arab, Arab, and I am supposedly an Arab. So I'm not talking, I'm not being a racist, talking about my people. Uh, there's nobody racist as much as they are. If you are a person from dark skin, forget it. They will not treat you as a slave. You are a slave for them. If you are a person who is uh, 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 Indian, they will never respect you. Even if you are an Egyptian, imagine Egyptian, supposedly they consider them as an Arab, but they are not for them. They discriminate you even if you are one of them. Egyptian is an African for them. They discriminate them. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter who you are. You will be discriminated somehow. So Arab discriminate Arab. Arab discriminate non-Arab. Arab discriminate you by color, by religion, by family. Who is your family? If you are from an important family, then we treat you differently. So those countries who have no law, everything is possible. You might be kidnapped. You might be raped. Your daughter, she might be raped, and you, what, what you can do about it if the one who kidnapped her is a prince? They would not even say, we never saw her. Did she disappear? Okay, we don't know. 
you know go and search in Google you will find from Indonesia Indonesia is a majority is a Muslim country a thousand and two hundred thousand two hundred uh, made killed in Saudi Arabia in one year twelve hundred poor women and how they get killed they made them they raped them most of them they get a bread net uh, what they do the, 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 the Saudi they go and they report in the police that they were made she stole our money and she ran she ran and then they take the body of this woman for sure before they report to the police what they do actually uh, they go uh, let us say they will not kill her yet they will go in the car so if somebody stop them in the street they are just going picnic in the desert so they go in the desert in the middle of nowhere you know they take the the maid out they shoot her they dump her in the desert and who's going to find her from the first day all the wolves and the hyena they will eat her flesh and nothing will be left of her and if they found her they will say okay well didn't we report to the police a year ago that this woman she stole our jewelries and she ran away how she ended the desert we do not know maybe somebody kidnapped her we don't know we had nothing to do with it you know and then the case will go against an, an unknown so a thousand and two hundred people uh, women from indonesia to the point it forced the indonesian government to stop any human being to go and work in saudi arabia as long as she is a female so their history of kidnapping and torturing and raping is very normal this is not only a behavior of a government you know uh, you go to work as a maid there you are coming from Philippines, you are coming from India, you are coming, you are coming from a poor country. They take advantage of you. And then the whole family will rape you, not only the the whole the the the, the one who owned the house will pay you a salary, him and his brothers and his sons, everybody in the house will rape you. And when you get to Bretnet, they shoot you, they dump you, they get rid of you. Uh, so nothing new and nothing will change. What this is noise is about, I don't know. Just because this guy is uh, from a wealthy family and he is rich and he is working in Washington Post now. They forgot that he is a terrorist who worked with Osama bin Laden, with Taliban. They forgot that he is an intelligent for the Saudi. They forgot all his history and now he is the victim. Well, I don't think he is a victim. I think Jesus said those who take by the sword by the sword will be taken criminals they have to pay for their crimes either now or later right now uh yeah in those countries they take your passport too you are right not only that in saudi arabia you cannot even leave between cities without permission of your uh they call it kafir which means the one who uh, sponsor you the one you work for him the one who gave you the visa so he have you are a slave of him he can accuse you any time. Who, who, you think they will believe who? There is many people I know. They work in Saudi Arabia for three, five, six years. They never get a salary. Why? Because they are the, the sponsor who brought them there with the visa, he threatened them, if you do that, if you ask for your salary, I'm going to accuse you that you stole my jewelries. I'm going to accuse you that you came to my house and you tried to rape my wife. You know? So what what the drama we see today about uh, about uh, you see where where is uh, Hillary Clinton and Obama why they never spoke about human rights in Saudi Arabia in Qatar you see hip hypocrites when when Obama he went to Saudi Arabia he bent down like a puppy in the front of the king of Saudi Arabia like a dog this guy is the president of the most powerful country which means he is supposedly the most powerful man on earth at that time. How dare you? For he is a servant. Same as Hillary Clinton. That's why the, the, the Saudi, the, do you remember, guys, the, the Prince Al Walid? He made fun of Trump. Who remember? Who remember when the Prince Al Walid, he made, he, he, he posted in a Twitter attacking Trump? Anyone remember? Why they did that? They did that because they never thought that he will win. They thought that their, 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 their women is going to win. Hillary Clinton. They're puppy, they're corrupt women, and her husband. 
they are in our pocket so they start humiliating him calling him names making fun of him because they never thought he will be a president and when Trump he may, became a president I assure you he was behind the reason to make this guy go to jail the crown prince of Saudi Arabia the first one he arrested it was this guy the Prince Al Walid they told him to come back urgently the second he arrived in the airport they took him and they arrested him and they stripped him with a couple of billions of dollars and now now this is good for Trump this all all what happened now is good for Trump because you see some people now they will say Trump is protecting the Saudi but uh, America is protecting the Saudi all the time since when the you know it's not about Trump but now Trump he will have advantage to control Saudi Arabia more and to force them to do more to USA and I believe and I will not be surprised if the Saudi soon they ask the American to open their to open their army base in in, in Saudi Arabia again because you know they made a mistake the Saudi you know the biggest mis biggest mistake they made when they told the American to leave uh, Saudi Arabia and that give opportunity to the Prince of Qatar to to ask the, the American to come to his country and now the Prince of Qatar is like a pig who bite everybody and he knows nobody there to attack him because of the American the Prince of Qatar can be taken off by the move moving the small finger of Trump or what he need to do he will give a light to the Saudi says to them attack Qatar and we will not move as simple as that and Qatar is a small tiny country and this guy he don't even have an army and even his army is a bunch of guys who have a big belly from eating rice and a lot of meat every day uh, so I believe what happened is very good to expose many things about Islamic countries and Saudi Arabia present remember present that this is the country of Mecca the country of Islam and Islam is a, is a place of justice people they were dressed white and people they pray five times a day and people are very religious but if you go to the embassy to get a stamp in your passport or a paper we cut your pieces that's exactly what Muhammad did if we go right now and check how many Muhammad he tortured and he killed we cannot even count the names nothing new and nothing unusual the business is the same Middle East never changed and will never change and as I said you know uh, uh, media is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a place of hypocrisy they remember things when they want and they forgot things when they want uh, CNN and and uh, uh, all those you know they are they are in business with this with the Saudi <clears throat> yeah this is normal I mean Muhammad he he, he kidnapped Muhammad he assassinate Muhammad he rape Muhammad he steal Muhammad even you know uh, I made a cartoon I don't know if you how many of you saw it uh, where Muhammad he is proud that he stole two sandals from a Jew he took his sandals and he took his donkey and he took some ounce of gold and silver and then he have a conversation with the donkey and his name is Yafur. you can watch the cartoon so uh, and even the Muslims admit that Muhammad he used to attack caravan he's a caravan you know what caravan mean like you are traveling between uh, 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 San Francisco and Los Angeles and then a bunch of bandit they stop you in the street and they shoot at you and they kill you and they take your wallet and they take your money and they take your computer and they take your wife this is what Muhammad is and the Muslims they agree that Muhammad did that. They don't even say he did not. No, no, the, I'm not saying the Middle East is the only corrupt. Corruption is a corruption is a disease, is the fastest spread disease everywhere. But the difference is, my friend, <clears throat> seeing like as an example, if you go to Israel, Israel suffer from a lot of, a lot of corruption, but still there is people who they go after the corruption as an example the president of, of, of Israel now is in jail is that correct the president himself 
the wife of Netanyahu is under investigation. That is saying that the country is still healthy. There is corruption, always will be corruption. But there is a law, and there is nobody above the law. Are you getting the point? So if they find if they found that Netanyahu is doing something wrong, he will go to jail. And he is not the first prime minister to go to jail in Israel. Are we listening, guys? It doesn't matter really. And that is telling you that the country is still healthy, but in the Middle East, <laughs> you know, as long as, as long you are in control, who's going to take you to jail? In Israel, the police they come and investigate with the prime minister, like as if he is a normal citizen, not a big deal. And they can take him to jail. And they did to many before him. Go and see how many prime ministers they went to jail in Israel. The president himself, right now, as, as we speak, he is serving five years in jail. So uh there is corruption everywhere in USA, in the West, everywhere. But there is corruption where it is in the flag, and they say we are corrupt and what you can do about it. And there is corruption which is under the table. And if you if if the uh, the public found about it, you will be in trouble. You know. Uh, so we cannot compare. You see, like uh, there is always there is a, there there is a, there is a stage of of, of law. Uh, in, in Islamic countries, as I notice, you are corrupt. Suddenly, you turn to be corrupt after they take you off of the office. You know what I mean? Like you go to, uh, what is his name? In uh, in uh, Banga, uh, Pakistan. The prime minister, he was there. He was out of the office. Now, suddenly, he is as corrupt. Then you turn in jail, blah, 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 blah. But when he was in office, nobody talk about it. The same as the, the prime minister of Malaysia. He received a hundred fifty million dollars, something like that, from the Saudi. So this, you know, there is no real uh, 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 fighting against corruption. It's just parties going after each other. Like I win now, you lose. So I'm going to dig behind you and see what you did. Uh, but in Israel, you can be uh, the prime minister in the in the job. You are the one in control. Yet you cannot stop an investigation happening against you. Same as in America. Like now in America, there's a judge who is investigating uh, or investigator investigating the Trump relationship to the Russian. Trump, he cannot stop it. And if you stop it, he will be in trouble. So this is what, what uh, uh, healthy countries do. Corruption can be exist, but still there is there's nobody have full control of the everything. Trump, he is the president. But he cannot control everything, you know, and that is healthy. That is very good because if a person is bad, he will not screw the whole country. Uh, somebody asking me if this uh, if this is will go bigger after this guy uh, exposed to be killed. Nothing will happen. He will see. So, uh, in the coming 24, 48 hours, the Saudi they will admit that this guy he was killed in the embassy and yes it's happened it happened but it was an authorized killing it's supposed to be an investigation only somebody did some aggressive uh, uh you know and he tried to cover up and the people in the in the embassy they tried to cover up the, the what they did and we do not know about it and what they will do i will tell you what they will do the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, he will, he will, uh, he will uh, withdraw the the ambassador of uh, of Saudi Arabia from Turkey, and he will say we will send him to court because he might be responsible. They cancel some employees, some police officers, but at the end of the day, nothing will happen. So what they will do, they will put it in the sheep. You know, there's always a sheep to give it for to to to, to present to sacrifice. They will sacrifice some of their poor employees. As simple as that. You know what I mean? Uh, the future of America with Saudi Arabia will be even better because now Trump he will control them better. They will they will own him a favor of protection. They need him more. They need to fix their reputation. They need to fix their uh, you know this is will make a very bad damage for the Saudi and the Crown Prince for a long long time. But um, you know this is why they will be more attached to the shoes of Trump. And whoever president will come after him, and they will spend more money on the corrupt president in Europe, like macaroni and baloney and you know, the, and all all the all, all the funny ones and the and the 
the royal family of uh, of England, you know, they will invite the crown prince who is always ready to come anywhere, just invite him for a hamburger and give him some gold. So they will try to make themselves look nicer, you know. Uh, and uh, many, many they are uh, they are willing to help. Yeah, money, money, my friend. You see, Al Qazafi, Al Qazafi is a terrorist. He is the one behind Lokarbi. All of you know, right? Okay, go and see how many European president went to Libya and give him a hug. After the American, they forced Al Qazafi to drop his chemical weapon. And they put their sanctions down right away the president of france he went there the prime minister of italy went there i mean one after one and all of them al qazafi he he showered them with money actually sarkozy he won the election by the money of al qazafi and right now there's an investigation and he might go to jail as we speak you know all of them they are corrupt so al qazafi is a terrorist why nobody says how you go and hug, give him a hug money <clears throat> uh, that's it libya is going to is, is destroyed libya will never have security and uh, uh, enter usa says you will have security libya is going to have war because simply there's no major power there to force security like in in syria in syria there is a, the russian if not the russian syria will be having war for the coming 60 70 years or maybe a hundred year so Libya will never have security unless unless the American they made decision that we want security there. But it's not for the benefit of any of those who they are selling oil to make security in Libya. As long the, oil, the, the, the war is going there, the oil price will be in better shape. If Libya come back to the oil business, then the oil price will drop heavily. And that is not good for the Saudi, that is not good for the American, that is not good for the Russian, that's not good for many. You know, like now uh, there is many, they, they, they are happy that Iran is going to be out of the uh, uh, oil market, including USA, including Saudi, including Venezuela, including Russia, including anyone who sell oil, except the one you put sanctions on them. So, there is a big reason not to let the Libyan come back to business and have security, which is oil. And because their oil is scary, they have a lot of oil and they might sponsor terrorism again with this money. So let them burn their money in war. As simple as that. This is the strategy, you know. And now inside Libya, Qatar and Saudi Arabia are fighting. Qatar, and Emir uh, Qatar versus US Saudi Arabia and Emirat. The Emirati and the Saudi they are arming groups and the Qatari, they are arming the Muslim Brotherhood in Libya. So the war will never stop there for the coming and God knows until when. Maybe 20 years, maybe 30 years, we do not know. Uh, you know, uh, like the 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 war in all is all, all Middle Eastern countries, you know, who is the one control really security? Those, those countries, they have no security. You see, ISIS, if you remember, let me open the map. I thought I'm going to make a video for five minutes. <laughs> I hate you guys. Uh, if you go in the uh, in the map, let's see. Let me open it and share it with you. <laughs> All right. This is the map here. If you remember, ISIS, when 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 the the, the Iraqi they ask USA to leave, they ask them, and uh, and Obama almost. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, unlock the map. <laughs> Commercial. All right, give me a second. What is that? To unlock the map, what I have to do? Should I say Alhamdulillahi Labul Alameen? Click at the banner. So you believe it? 
you have to, to unlock the map you have to click at the ad this is how they force you to make money make money out of you and now it took me where what is that garbage let us see Okay, let's see this one. <clears throat> I hope this one is not the same garbage. Anyway, you know, uh, the Muslim Shia in Iraq, because they hate America, they ask the, the American to leave. Allahu Akbar, Kuffar, get us away, get away from here, you know. <clears throat> all this, uh, all this garbage. And then ISIS, because American they left, ISIS they were so happy. That's it. There's nobody to stop them. So ISIS they were they control most of Iraq. Very easy, very fast. And nobody was able to stop them. If not the American, if not the American, ISIS right now will be controlling all of Iraq. When when ISIS they arrived to the point almost sixty to fifty kilometers from Baghdad, which mean here. They took Salah al-Din, they took took as Salam Salamaniya, they took uh, they took all this area, they took all all Al Ambar, they took all this area. All this area it was was under the control of uh, uh, ISIS, you know. Imagine and then they took all this area too here So it became bigger than Iraq itself and Syria itself so when when the American left Isis Expanded badly and that because of the the you know the help of uh, Obama who uh, Obviously purposely he is waiting for this to happen uh, but I think Obama, he was planning to make the Muslim Brotherhood take over, not really ISIS. He wanted to start the Islamic Caliphate state, but it was the Muslim Brotherhood plan. So then the, the Shia, the government in Iraq, they, they begged the American to send their troops again. And then ISIS start losing again, you know, territory after territory after territory after territory until they kick them out totally of Iraq. And now after. ISIS is gone. The Shia they will do the same. They will ask American to leave as usual, you know. But if American they left again, ISIS will extend again, and you will see, you know. The only reason that ISIS cannot do that in Syria that because the Russian are not temporarily there. The Russian are staying there, and until now you see here that, and this is very surprising. You will see that ISIS until now they have big territory inside Syria, and the question is. Why? When when the uh, uh, when the Russian they try to attack ISIS in this area, American they stop them. They don't allow them to go farther. Nobody can get in. I mean, okay, we finish as ISIS there. No, we are not finished. So why why the war stop on them? Why you don't finish them all? Simply the American they are giving a clear message that if you ask us to leave We will let those on you and they can gather their forces again and they will get Mujahideen coming from around the world and ISIS right now have more than five to six billion dollars budget as money with them Which means they're saving so ISIS now is not the same as before. Yes, they collapsed. They lost everything but they have a lot of money and that money can recruit a lot of people you see all what you need to do in countries who are suffering from security and there's no jobs and there's no money and there's no business is to pay salary a person who have a family he want to run you know he want to feed them what he will do they will say to him join us we will give you uh, 500 dollars a month that will more than enough to feed you and we will give you free rice we will give you free bread 
we will give you free coupon we'll give you free housing what do you want more this is how Isis was able to accomplish their mission they control the oil and they grab all the benefit from the oil and then they were able to recruit but because they rule all this area for more than three years they were able to save a lot of money Isis they took only from the city of Al Mosul Al Mosul alone uh, more than 600 million dollar from one bank one bank only they attack the city the bank have about 600 million dollars a government bank they rip it all so they have a lot of money and ISIS existence now is important for the American you know uh, I don't know if I told you a story before about a guy in in the Middle East we call him Juha uh, Juha is a kind of a comedy person in the in the culture of the Middle East and Juha uh, he's supposed to be a funny person so he uh, he sold the house he owned but he put a condition in the new buyer he told him I am going to sell you all the house but I I have a condition I have a nail and this nail is I'm going to put it in the bedroom you have to give me access to this nail anytime on the daytime this is the nail so Juha he come in the middle of the night he look at the door and this guy is sleeping with his wife in the bedroom what what do you want Juha uh, you forgot what forgot what I bought the house from you why you are coming now you forgot we made a condition I have to go I have a nail I have a nail in the bedroom this is the condition so now Juha he go inside and he go all the way to the bedroom to check the nail Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? So, if the snail is coming out, how Juha can get in? <laughs> so, in order to make to make us having access to Syria and to Iraq, and nobody can even live without us, we have to keep the nail of Juha there, and that is the nail which they are talking about. Uh, otherwise, I mean. ISIS collapsed. They are very weak now. Why this? Uh, what this is that? What, what happened? How they say the war is over? I mean, how they say that ISIS is gone, but it's there. Do you see it? They are there. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we will make it for you in Arabic. No problem. But I think people, they get the point. The point is, uh we we tell you we don't want anything from here but we have a nail there and well without us you cannot you cannot do it all right and if we take this nail off then you do not need us so we have to keep the nail as it is uh and this is the case on all over the middle east you see like now uh iran as an example iran is a wonderful resource of money to usa and the west because all those naive, uh, weak uh, countries in the Gulf, they need the protection of USA. And without USA, they cannot fight Iran. You know, Iran can, can swallow them overnight. Iran is a powerful, big, huge country, big population. Uh, and they have gas, they have oil, they have money. And those countries around them, Arab countries, they are still Bedouin and educated. Um, yes, they have nice roads now because of the oil. Like if you go to Emirat, you think you are going to, to a high-tech country. But still, Emirat can be controlled in not even five minutes. What Emirat? And the whole army of Emirat is smaller than my family if they are coming for lunch. So uh, it's, they are small, tiny countries and they have a very weak uh, uh, defense system and they are spending too much money on defense but that will not make you have an army you see because all your weapon anyway is not really even your weapon and you know having 60 airplane or 70 airplane in in emirat would not make you able to fight an army like iran uh, and iran is very 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 close they can do invasion very fast you see 
like if you if you measure in Google the distance between here and here this is this is nothing the distance between this area between Qatar as an example and Iran is nothing here here is even almost nothing at all you know uh, Iran right now is a threat in that if American they stop really all the production of oil to be sold outside they are going to to close this area here in the in the sea which is supposed to is going to stop a lot of oil from being produced and sold but for sure Iran the second they do that it's mean they are going to go for war and that means they are going to go with war with Emirat with Saudi uh, with the uh, Bahrain uh, with all the countries except Kuwait because Kuwait I believe they are just too much puppies and they have no loyalty uh, and Qatar because Qatar already is uh, you know friends to the Iranian however Qatar will not go in war for sure and they cannot go in war anyway but the USA is controlling all this territory here which is their base army base which is going to be very useful to hit Iran in case of war uh, so let us see what will happen and uh, tomorrow will come with more news but my advice to you my friend don't go to the Middle East me myself I don't advise anyone to go to the Middle East you might be uh, like uh, you like to go and see uh, ancient buildings in Egypt I don't advise you Go and see how many tourists every year get killed and disappear in Egypt. Go and see what happened to the guy who was doing his PhD. And there's now a guy who is doing his PhD in Emirat. He is in jail for the last six months. He was doing his PhD. They accuse him of being a spy. Spy? He was just a question about the royal family to make his study. The second you start to question the royal family behavior, it's the same second they will accuse you of anything. Uh, so don't go to the Middle East I don't advise you unless for you you are willing to risk it especially if you are a female a female she go to the Middle East she is all she, literally she is out of her mind and she is stupid don't don't complain for what will happen to you when you go there if something happened to you I saw so many so many people they make videos about going to trip in uh, as an example in Egypt <clears throat> The first thing you will you will you will face when you go to Egypt is if you are a female you will be molested. This is in the best scenario, if not raped. Uh, a Western woman, in the eyes of people there, she is a whore. Excuse my language. I'm not being rude, but this is how it is. So you walk in the street. Everybody want to take a bite of you. Everybody want to touch you. Everything. Everybody will think you are a whore. Who think that you can sleep with you and you don't mind even to take off your panty in the street. So be careful about what you do. Where you go. You know. These countries are not safe and not secure. Nobody should go there unless he have to. Unless you are a Middle Eastern, because then you know how to deal with them. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not speaking against the Egyptian. No, I'm. I'm, I'm saying about situation. You see, uh, uh, you go. You can go and see. You walk in the street. If a woman, she is wearing a jeans, wearing nice clothes. Walking along in the street, you will find 500 dogs chasing her. There's tons of videos like that. You will not believe it. If I show you, you will not truly, you will not believe it. You know, you go in the bus, you want to take the bus, like you see those uh, who want to uh, travel in budget. You go in Egypt in the bus, they will molest you. They will, they will rape you in the bus. <laughs> you know, uh, and. Uh, uh, you know, not the, not only Egypt. I mean, all the all Middle Eastern countries is the same garbage. You know, because those they are hungry to sex, and they have their idea that you are a Western. You sleep with everybody. Uh, since you are twelve years old, you are sleeping around. So now, why you want to be what? You want to be the Virgin Mary now? Huh? Huh? What's wrong with you? You know, uh, they do that even to their own people. So what they will do to you as a foreigner? You know what I mean? Don't think that Egyptian women she is safe. No, Egyptian women they will be harassed, they will be molested. She go in the bus, she is because the bus is there is very very busy. So ten men they were around her. One is touching her breast, the other one is touching her ass, the other one is rubbing his private part with her body. I mean it's horrible. But if you are a poor woman, what you will what you will do? You have to take the bus. You cannot take a taxi. And if you go and take a taxi, as an example in Jordan, 
if you go in Jordan all the taxis have no uh, uh, stereo anyone knows why anyone anyone knows why in Jordan there's no stereo in taxi who knows why nobody knows why you go in Jordan this is Jordan now not Egypt you go in Jordan inside the taxi the driver he will play for you porn tape sound like a guy and the women having sex the second a woman she jump in the back seat he put a tape porn tape in the stereo to the point this became very popular that the government have to force that all taxis take their stereo imagine there's no radio there's no stereo there's nothing inside the taxi they take it off it's corrupt society garbage they have no ethic they speak too much about ethic nobody speak about ethic and about religion as much they do nobody speak about ethic as much they do but in reality the story is different you know me myself when i was in, in high school i remember a guy uh, he's in my with me in the high school uh he said to me you know what i'm not going to go after a girl any, anymore i said what girl he said yesterday i saw a girl she was really really good looking and i chased her so i was walking behind behind her saying you know like you're beautiful etc she's wearing burqa and then you know she's walking in the same direction of his house and then she keep walking in the same direction and he's going to his house anyway but she's in his way in front of him then she stopped in the front of his house so he thought what she maybe she know him she's going to tell his family or something you know obviously she know him because why she stopped in the front of his house and she and she, then she knock at the door and then she get in he just walking like 50 meter away like what she's getting to my house so he thought he's going to tell his dad later he found out that this is his sister so this guy was chasing his sister saying to her filthy words you know filthy language you know let us go let us do this let us do that you know and then at the end he found that this is his sister who was wearing a burqa he went inside the house to see where is this girl maybe she is coming to visit his sister maybe she's a friend to his sister she will tell her sister about him you know so he went inside the house is like worry about what will happen maybe she told my family maybe she told my sister but it was there's nobody she said he said where is the girl who came his sister she said it's me it's me you are chasing me all this time so he was telling me what happened he said i will never do that again so you can imagine if they are doing this to their sister uh well you see the only the only way for countries to be advanced to bring a christianity and i'm being honest in that you can ask anyone including muslims if you go in the middle east in any country a country occupied by christians is totally different from country from 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 streets and ter territory occupied by muslims you can go as an example to anywhere like lebanon jordan egypt uh, but what do, you, what do you want it doesn't matter just go and see the second you enter an area which have Christians is different the same as in Israel go to Gaza and go to Israel it's, it's just a, it's like one kilometer between them you will find yourself as if you are turning from heaven to hell not only about uh, everything changed how clean it is the garbage the language you know go in Beirut you go to the east of Beirut you feel you are you are you are you, you know it's better than better than Europe. You go in the in the in the Islamic territory, go to Hezbollah area. You will feel like you are going in Iran, and the mullahs, the, the pictures of the ter the terrorists everywhere, people holding guns everywhere. I mean, this is garbage, graffiti everywhere. I mean, it's it's crazy. Actually, in if if you build a building. Let me tell you what 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 they do in the Middle East about about uh, the the real estate business. There is many Muslims who they are rich. They build buildings, they build buildings, and they sell only to Christians. Anyone knows why? 
anyone knows why they sell only the Christians imagine he's a business the owner the businessman is a Muslim but yet he want to sell only to Christians why let us see who, who of you will uh, will figure out why they are selling why why they are selling to Christians no the, it's not because he liked the Christians but because the price if the whole building is a Christians the price the building will be three four times more the second you sell to a one Muslim family, the price will drop. Nobody want to stay there. A Muslim man, he will pay any price to live in a Christian territory because his children will be safe, his wife will not, he will not be worried about, uh, you know, when, when Muslim family, they come to visit my family, the wife she come in she's wearing short skirt she take the hijab she sit and she's wearing short skirt you know nobody of us actually from my family they wear what they wear she is showing the top of her chest like she is a mexican girl a lot of makeup and you know like what happened because we are christians when i was in high school i am like you know i'm already a man you know when you are in high school you're not a kid no more i go to visit to visit muslims if i am alone coming I go and I sit with their sisters and nobody hide and nobody wear hijab and they are wearing even your sleeping clothes The second another Muslim guy he come and look at the door all the girls hide Why because Muslims don't trust Muslims They trust you as a Christian. This is a fact They don't trust each other They knew that Islam will make the mind of a person Right away, when a Muslim he enter a house of other Muslim, he will start looking at the legs of the wives of of, of this guy, uh, uh, or his daughter. She is walking by and she is wearing something. You know, right away, all the women they have to hide. Do you remember the story where Muhammad he said to uh, to his wives to hide when the blind man he come? Do you remember, guys? A blind man. I mean. <laughs> why they want to hide from a blind man because he have a dirty mind you see when you have a dirty mind you think dirty always do you know what i mean if you are a thief you think everybody is a thief if you are a whore you think everybody is a whore if you are you know you think who you are about others so when a blind man <clears throat> Come to visit Muhammad. Let's find you the hadith. I have a problem with my keyboard. Hold on. Let us see. Here we go. I was with the Messenger of Allah, SWS, BBBB, FG, Mercedes Benz, when Ibn Imu Maktoum came. This guy is a blind man. And this guy, Muhammad, right away, when this man he came, he said, he said to his wife, Observe veil from him. We ask, Messenger of Allah, but isn't he blind? <laughs> Muhammad is asking them to observe veil to wear to wear hijab, but they said, "Isn't he blind? He can he can neither see us, neither or nor recognize us." Look what Muhammad he said. He said because now he got busted that he's stupid. He said, "Are you both blind? Like what? Don't you see him? But we know that hijab, women she still can see. All what she need to do is just to cover herself." And so what if she can see him? This guy is not naked. But because he's a dirty-minded person, he is worrying that his wives will look at this man who is a blind. When you are a person 
who is dirty in the mind anything you see around you you sign around you from women you think they are sexual object this is why he think anyone he will come to his house he will think about his wives as sexual object right do we have any Muslim here <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim here? Or, or you know, if you if you look at the comments of the Muslims in my videos, I, I always laugh. You will see they are calling me names. I do not know what I'm talking about. This guy is a stupid, but they don't dare to call me. Why you don't call me? Call me and get me busted life. Don't you want to get the honor? Of, and, and imagine my friend Abdul. If you call me and get me busted, do you know how many Allah, how many inch Allah will increase, increase, or how many meter or kilometer? Allah will increase the size of your penis. You remember that the Prophet he promised you that Allah will give you endless penis. So if you fight me and get me busted, Allah even will increase the endless penis. Will make it like maybe a few kilometers longer. Don't you want to get that? Hello. Give me your evidence about what? About what? About the endless penis? Okay, what about you call me and I will show it to you and I will make you read it. What do you say? Is that a good deal guys? Is that a good good deal? Are you willing to call me? Say yes, I will I will log in Skype. <clears throat> Hello? Hello? Hello, 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 Beirut, min fadlak ya iney. Tadadadadam. Atini Abdul, dakhlak al khatti shway. Hello, Abdul, hello, Abdul, min fadlak ya iney. Tadadadadam. Call me Abdul, call me now. Miss Shway. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now he's playing dead. You know, they, they play between, like, you know, he, he have a big mouth, the text is running. The second you start talking to him, he say like, what are you talking to me? I'm not here, I'm even dead. Hello? And then he will go and he will uh, he will sing the, the song for those who speak Arabic, they know there is a song, it's called Zalamu. You know Zalamu? Zalamu, Zalamu, Imhamed, Zalamu, Darabu, Zau, Upsahnim, Khalil, E. Hatu, E. Hatu, Tarim. All right. <laughs> anyway, what happened to you, Abdul? Why, what happened? You're, what what happened to the guy? Anyway, <laughs> uh, so if you are a female, please just preserve your veil because we have a blind in the house. Are you blind, Abdul? Can you tell me why your prophet he is ordering his wives to hide from a blind man? Why do they have to wear hijab? He's a blind. Do you do that, Abdul? Do you do that if a, if, a, if a blind man come into your house? Do you order your wife to wear hijab? One question, answer if. He have one question. This guy, he's Muslim. You see this Muslim, he have one, one question. All his life, he have one question. He don't have a question why he's a prophet is ordering his wife to, to wear a veil when the guy is a blind. <laughs> this is not a problem. All right? <laughs> Any Abdul? All right. Anyway, I wasn't really uh, planning to stay long today. See, guys, we tried to st to to do a live podcast for for ten minutes, and look what happened. I mean, because of you. What are you doing? I will complain to Allah now when His Messenger. Anyway, going back to our topic about this guy, nothing will happen. 
the Saudi, uh, I believe they are going to uh, that set. I think they, they have enough evidence. I think they have recording about, uh, against them. And I believe it was either mostly is the CIA who linked those audio to the Turkish authority uh, to to put uh, to put more pressure on the Saudi. Uh, obviously, there's an agenda behind this. The the story of this guy was wearing Apple Watch and all this garbage. I mean, nobody can believe it. When you go inside the Saudi to a place where they investigate you, uh, those they have uh, special rooms where there's no connection can go through. Uh, no, so nobody can spy at them, etc. But obviously, you can do that. But the CIA they have their own way to spy at anyone, and most likely, I think the the crown prince he was uh, he is the one who uh, uh, did the investigation life in a, in a let us say in private call uh, private um, video thing and the cia they have the whole thing taped so the saudi they will be controlled by usa for a long long time to come because they can release this tape anytime and they can expose the crown prince and that will be a big problem for him uh, my friend don't worry about the ignorant comment what about you for you, you focus in the ignorant comment of your god as an example your god he said the sun set in murky water do you think this is an ignorant comment or stupid or smart huh hello why you are focusing in the in the in the comment in the text, but you are not focusing in the comment of your prophet, the Quran? By the way, tomorrow at three thirty p.m., be here, everybody. We are going to speak about the topic. the The video is already uh, titled. It's about why the Muslim is a why the Shaitan is a Muslim in Islam. This is the only religion. The Shaitan is part of it. He is a believer. This is the only religion. So tomorrow we'll talk about it and I hope some Muslims will call us and they will be brave to debate us. Uh, forget about this guy. He's a poor guy. You know, put yourself, put, put yourself in his shoes. He have a God. His prophet never spoke to him. He never heard his voice. He never even met him. His prophet, he went to the seven, eleven heaven in the top of a flying donkey, but the donkey have no wings. And this guy, he came back and nobody saw him. He have no miracles. Nobody saw a miracle. Uh, the Quran confirmed that uh, this guy, his God, he said to him that his sperm coming from the backbone and the ribs of the women. His God told him sun set in murky water. His God told him that uh, he will make his penis endless, which is very painful and this dangerous. Because imagine you live in Egypt, but your yet your penis is in Tokyo. I mean, what will happen between? What what if your penis went to the jungles of uh, Brazil? Do you know what kind of ants there? What do you think? Do you know what kind of ants, what they will do to your penis if you go in the jungle with it? I mean, this is really very, very, this is not a reward, my friend. This is very dangerous. And why you need an endless penis if your wife is next to you? I mean, your wife is next to you, but your penis is in Tokyo. So what do you do now? You make a U-turn? Come on, I'm sure you are smart, all right? That, imagine, imagine, you know, you live in New York, but your penis, you know, you get a ticket for, because of your penis in Ching Chong Chong Jing Jong Bing Jing, which is a, a, a you know, a, a sub, the suburb of Beijing. What, you, you receive a mail from the Chinese authority says that your penis was, you know, blocking the highway. I mean, come on. And you cannot you cannot get away with it because it's connected to you. You cannot cut it off and say, "As I have nothing to do with it." They will trace it. Your penis have an IP. How I can call you? You want to call me? Are you serious? Okay, hold on. This guy want to call me. Yeah, give, give him give him my uh, Skype. I wasn't planning to open my. Uh, <clears throat> but as long as he want to call me, let us see what he want to do. Call me in Skype.
let us go to the application go to Skype <laughs> but this is a I'm expecting him now he will not call I will give you five minutes to call me if you don't call me after that forget all right let us log in <laughs> Who want to bet that he will not call me? Who is a Muslim want to bet with me that betting is haram? Any Muslim want to bet that it's haram to bet? Trust me, they do it. <laughs> All right, Abdul, you can call me. I am in Skype now. Go ahead. Let us see how good you are. Are you going to call? Call me, my friend. Call me. I'm waiting. And trust me, you know, Allah will, will help you. You know, will give you all the energy you need. And all the answers. Allah have all the answers. Anything you want to know. I mean, just if you have any question, just ask Allah. Unbelievable. Does God He knows anything? Anything. You just name it. <clears throat> Are you going to call me, my friend? I'm waiting. It is haram. Yeah. It's haram to bet. Is it haram to bet? But it's not haram to do gambling. The Quran says it's haram to do gambling. But Muhammad, he gambled all the time. You Muslims, you gamble all the time. When you believe in religion, in a God you never saw, you never spoke to, you never heard of, you never even heard his voice or his fart. Isn't it gambling? It's gambling. You believe that there is a God, he will give you a lot of versions. How do you know even they are versions? Maybe they are goats. Maybe they are, he will not give you anything. It's a gambling. You go and you don't, you join the Mujahideen. You gamble your life to get what? A bunch of versions. And then after you open the box, you find they are like 100 years old and they are not version at all. They just have a plastic surgery and their belly became in their nose. Are you going to call me or what? <clears throat> Are we going to receive a call or no? There we go. See, they, they, they seek attention, you know. They, uh... <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, what the, the you know the idea of having eighty thousand versions. I mean, this is not this is not heaven. This is hell. Imagine you go inside a bedroom, you find eighty thousand women. They, they they jump on you. What would happen to me then? I will be tortured. This is not heaven. One woman, she would drive you crazy. What about two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and eighty thousand women and then eighty thousand little boy to serve you, according to Muhammad. 80,000? Why? How many sandwiches I would eat a day? Do you remember once I was debating a Muslim? He says the prophet here was, uh, he's, he's being exaggerating. Exaggerating? It's mean he's lying. What do you mean exaggerating? When you say he was exaggerating, it's mean he's a, he's a liar. <clears throat> yeah, this is what moderate Muslims do. Moderate Muslim, they, they get you inside the embassy and they use the high-tech technology ma machines to cut you pieces. That is a moderate terrorist. I mean, obviously, he's a moderate. You go inside the embassy to sign a paper and then they cut you pieces and he is a moderate. I mean, come on. 
Go, buddy, go. Don't call me. Don't call me. What how I can call you? Go, go. I will I will ban you from texting here. I have I have no time for I will give you time out just because you're a bad boy. Forget. All this time we log in Skype and now he's asking me how to call you. <clears throat> anyway, just to finish this topic here, let us see in the coming 48 hours what will happen. But I believe this will happen exactly. They will announce that yes, he was killed in the embassy. But the crown prince, he have nothing to do with it. The king, his majesty, is very innocent. The crown prince is an angel, Jibril, and he don't even know what version mean. And the the crown prince, he will say, I have no idea. I have no idea. I wish I know. I will punish severely those who killed this guy. I told them, give him ice cream. Not to make him a cream. Look like when I spoke to them over the phone, the voice was cutting and they did not hear the word ice. They heard the word cream. So they creamed the guy and then they dump him in the sewage. And those things happen always in the Middle East. The prophet, he hears something from God, but he don't hear the whole thing. He hear only when he says to him, and any Muslim woman, she want to take off her panty only as a privilege to the prophet. He heard that part. You know, he, it is, his ears was really, was really all hearing, all listening. So my friend, don't, I mean, things happen I mean how many times do you hear in the movie sometime like the guy is trying to ask for rescue and then suddenly the phone is not working I mean come on those things happen always in American movies or uh, suddenly like uh, uh, you know like uh, the helicopter mayday 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 and like what hello like the machine was working all the time but now because they need it it's not working I mean it's a movie Perfect movie, oh, and uh, and and Muslims are the best to make movies. So now you will see how many journalists will defend the Crown Prince, how many newspapers will write about how amazing he is, um, that he is really a person who is so much in love with ice cream, and he never thought they would make the guy cream, or you know, you will see, you will see. <clears throat> Yeah, and actually, in the best scenario, they might say that uh, Jamal Khashoggi he committed suicide when he went to the bathroom to brush his teeth. He swallowed his uh, toothbrush, uh, and uh, or maybe they will say uh, by mistake he swallowed the 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 base the base of his uh, toothbrush, and uh, he want he tried to uh, 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 to spit it out. He put his head down in the toilet seat, but accidentally he fell down in the toilet seat, and he held the flesh, the flesh uh, uh, for the water by his hand to survive. But that made the water swallow him. I mean, those things happen always in the Middle East. You guys, you have no idea. You don't speak Arabic anyway. <laughs> Today, one of you, somebody sent a video. He posted a video on YouTube, and this guy with his name Muhammad Hijab, he was saying to the guy every two minutes, "You don't know Arabic. You don't know Arabic. You don't know Arabic." You don't know Arabic. <laughs> you don't know Arabic. <laughs> My friend, because you don't know Arabic, you have no idea how fun it is to go in the in the embassy, in any embassy, Middle Eastern embassy. So I encourage you all actually to apply for visas in Saudi Arabia, to Emirat, Bahrain. I mean, a lot. You will be famous. Okay, imagine you go in the embassy, of uh, Emirat, and then you disappear. But be careful. Leave your wife or fiancé outside, or if you are married woman, leave your husband outside and leave the phone so we can trace you. You know, you know, like this guy. If if they knew that his fiancé was out, obviously that will not happen. Uh, <clears throat> but obviously, it's very fun to go and visit any embassy in the Middle East. And I advise you guys to visit the Middle East. I'm a Middle Eastern. It's the best place in the world. It is the best. 
first of all you see the Middle East have a lot of things you don't have in your country as an example in the Middle East if you are if you have some connection you can drive when the when the traffic light is red okay <laughs> who care <laughs> one phone call it's okay uh, if the policeman he chase you even you can send him to jail I'm not kidding you can send the policeman to jail he will apologize the second he knew who you are in the Middle East you can kill somebody you can shoot as long as you are rich you will not go to jail you can do whatever you want I mean it's fun this is how it is السال الإلكترونية راحت فين باعوها خليلو you know when they say that this is recorded by the Apple Watch this is a joke you know uh, as I said in embassies you cannot do any transmission from inside the embassy to outside all phones when they get inside the embassies especially those embassies who they are red light traffic embassies who do kidnapping and etc it's like even USA USA embassy there's no transmission you know and there they won't even allow you to to have any electronic things with you including your watch uh, this is the this is why they don't allow you to even to have your phone with you inside you have to leave it outside because you can record with it and all of them they knew that those watches they can record too and they can transmit <clears throat> yeah he agreed to debate David Wood why he will not agree my friend uh, David Wood is not <clears throat> is not a person who can uh, uh, break the bones of a Muslim he do not know much about Islam and he don't speak Arabic they will play the game with him as he don't know Arabic no. this is why they agree with it to debate him this is why they agree to debate anyone who don't speak Arabic uh, he's dead <laughs> you want me to debate the dead guy <laughs> I'm glad you did not say to me do you want to have an interview with Jamal Khashoggi <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will debate anyone including Muhammad just to bring him back anyone you wish you know always I have my scalp open I, I, I do not need anyone to tell me I want to debate or not to debate. Just call me. <coughs> Hello? Hello? Yes. Christian friends? Yes. Yes. Uh, you, you hear me, right? I hear you. Who is with us? Who is with us? Uh, my name is Ibrahim. Uh, I'm from Turkey and now I watch your program. Thank right, you very right. much for your uh, information. Uh, you are really good uh, at this work, really. Thank you, Ibrahim. <laughs> So, uh, so what, what do you want to share with us? What do you think? Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you. Uh, I am ex-Muslim. Right. I left this religion uh, more than 20 years ago. Okay. I am 40 years old. Uh, I have also a YouTube channel, GIG TV. All right. I take information uh, from your uh, programs that I use. That Sometimes I show your program. Uh, videos in my programs that's wonderful really, thank you very much uh, you really so you speak you, you, speak, uh, you speak to Turkish people Ibrahim yes of course of course uh, I make program uh, by Turkish language and do you have many subscribers I hope you have uh, you have many I hope so uh, they closed my channel many times almost three don't, years don't don't give up open open again uh, you know always back up I, your, I open, I open, yeah uh, always, always back up your videos you know ask people to download your videos and you can load them in other channels and other places and uh, you know you can load them again because they will they will try to fight you you know them I know I know yeah uh, really I understand you very much bro, because you really this religion is uh, like a devil in this world believe me you already know I want to say your subscribers also this is a devil religion I escaped uh, from Turkey because of this I'm sorry I don't want to use bad words but really I hate I hate because of this uh, devil religion, I escaped from Turkey because I'm tired uh, to see uh, the stupid people around me. Uh, they believe this devil like a paradise. Yeah. Really? Really? Yeah. Even in Russia, now I'm in Russia. Uh, I tried to go to the United States, but they didn't give me visa because I am from Muslim they country. Will, they will give you only if you are a terrorist. <laughs> Maybe. If you join Al Qaeda, trust me, if you join Al Qaeda or ISIS, all European countries they will give you a visa right away 
yeah, 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 yeah. Really, really. I really, uh, I don't know when people uh, will wake up fr from this uh, devil idea. Really. Yeah. Did you did I'm you try to grow Ibrahim? I, I I have yeah. advice for you. Grow your beard. Grow your beard and wear clothes like a terrorist and go to apply to the French embassy and you will see they will give you a visa or English embassy. I'm serious. Yeah, they will, maybe, they will give you a visa right away. You know, just to grow your beard. You know, when you go there, whatever they ask you, say whatever they ask you, say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. But I hate these words. <laughs> yeah. Do you Alhamdulillah? The, the right away they will give you a visa because they give visas to all terrorists in the world. England is the nest of terrorism and terrorists. Same as the France. Same. You know, just go go to England. You will see all the big terrorists in the world. They are there in the heart of London. London. You know. Just uh, it was my dream uh, to live in the United States because I love to speak uh, English language, uh, but I don't have it yet. Uh, sometimes people ask me, uh, my friend, what about we exchange? You take my place, I take your place in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I want to improve my English because not enough. Uh, sometimes I read uh, your programs with sub sub subtitles because it's hard to understand because. Especially this uh, religion uh, words, it's very different for me because we are Turkish. We don't understand. Yeah. Especially uh, when I make program, uh, I learn really. I, I many times uh, need to thank you, really, because in Turkey, you know, we don't understand uh, Arabic language. They change the words like uh, plastic. Yeah. They every time change. They uh, try to show people this religion like a paradise. But in the base, everything is different. Yeah, I know. I know yeah. how it is. I know how it is. You know, they uh, the same in English, by the way. They try, they change the translation. They change in the French. They change in all languages in order to fool people. Like when they make tons of videos about Quran and science, yeah, all yeah, yeah. all those videos are they 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 give long wrong interpretation, wrong translation, just to fool people, make them believe that the Quran really teaching about science. Like they are uh, fabricating lie. People. Yeah, it's a you know the only way to to sponsor a lie is to make another lie. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, I start uh, I start to make a video uh, uh, almost uh, three years ago, maybe more. Too many channels uh, closed because they attack me. Can you imagine? Maybe a uh, thousand thousand people send them email to kill me, just yeah. to show the reality because of reality. I always. I make an uh, online program like you. They every time attack me, even online. Yeah. We will kill you, we will fight you. I say, do you see what I'm explaining you? This is your religion. Yeah, now don't, you are don't, don't, uh, don't be afraid of any, any of them. You see, the Muslims, now, the Muslims now, they stop, uh, sadly, I don't know why, they stop sending me threat. They used to send me threat, but I don't know why they stop. I think they give up. They know this is not working, yes. you know? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it's, uh, the, the, they try to intimidate you, to scare you, in order to shut up. Uh, but then, after some time, they will notice that you don't care, and then they will they will give up. You know, but for in the beginning, always they try to do that with everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but now uh, <coughs> less. In the beginning time, I I was the first who was making the video three years ago. Now there are some people they also make video, but they close their face. When yeah. I start to make video, uh, I I was using mask, mm. vendetta mask. I was using. They were searching me, all the Turkey, everywhere. They uh, go everywhere, and suddenly they uh, understand who I am mm. because my mm. accent, uh, and they find my family, and they push my family to stop me. Can you imagine? This is religion. Oh yeah, I know, I know. They this is religion. They will do anything. Police come. Police come. This uh, fanatic Islamist people come, my brothers, my sisters. Can you imagine? That's why I try to explain people. This is reality, Islam. Yeah. This is the reality. Yeah. People must learn this uh, sick idea. Well, I'm glad that you are out of it, uh, Ibrahim, and uh, I hope more Turkish people they will join you. And feel free to post uh, to post your name in the text. So people they can click at your name in YouTube and maybe they can subscribe. If there's yeah, any. I write already. G I G T V. Uh, the test, uh, All right, guys. This is this is his name. This is his name. This is his account. Anyone would like to subscribe to his channel if you speak Turkish, feel free because his channel is in Turkish. All right. Yeah. Uh, 
by the way, Christian Prince, yes. uh, I want to ask you a question because uh, your video is very long. It's very hard to understand them because three hours, four hours, two hours, and every time I uh, making back to understand you, but uh, I couldn't find. You are talking sometimes this Suleiman history about uh, you every time telling mm. uh, Shaitan come uh, this Shaitan sleep all his wives something like that. Uh, but I need this uh, search. Where can I find this uh, real search? Because you can, if, you, if, if you can get my books, if you can get my books in Kindle, they are cheap. You can you can get all the reference for all those stories. That, ah. that would be the easiest way to always have the reference in your hand, you know, because uh, for me, sometimes it's really hard. Uh, like if you go to Facebook, everybody asking me where I can find this, where I can find that. I cannot answer everybody, you know. I can answer when I'm like, I'm live and uh, debating somebody but the easiest way always if you see a video i'm speaking about something usually i show it in the screen correct mm -hmm. what you can do free if uh, pause the video stop the video and type the same exact words you see in the front of you in the screen especially if it's in english search it in google yeah i know i know I yeah and you will it. find it i know yeah, yeah. but you know uh, when i'm making video if uh, if i read it's okay but I want to show uh, in front of people on the website. For example, I learned from you. Sunnah. Yeah, you can, you know, Ibrahim, uh, before you start your video, your your uh, teaching, search for the yeah. reference. You see, for me, I don't search for reference before. I find them when I am talking because I can find them easy. Uh, but for you, before you open a topic, go and do, let us say, you watch my video today speaking about uh, whatever issue. Uh, mm -hmm. find the reference save them in uh, like uh, Microsoft words so next time you want them they will be there you will not need to look for them every time and make this file like full of reference for many things so anytime you want to talk about any topic and organize them like make them uh, this uh, about uh, killing this one is about rape this one is about uh, theft it's about mm -hmm. about uh, versions etc you know mm -hmm. yeah this yeah. way okay. this way you do not need to look for reference and you see, actually, in uh, in the chat here, we have many admins uh, who e either they post during the chat or yeah, after, like like there is a brother. His name is Phil. He's very he's very good guy. Uh, after I finish always the videos, he posts a lot of reference down for the same things I was speaking in the. Yeah, in, I know. I know. Yeah, you can take see. the reference from there, whatever the topic is. All right. Yeah, but I, I need exactly this website about uh, this uh, Suleiman history because I will open and show people. Like you open the website, this is uh, searching, and you can see this website. You can, if you want, you can, you can look. I always uh, show people. This is the reference. This is ayat. Yeah. Uh, chapter this, chapter this, like this. But I couldn't find this uh, because I watch uh, many videos in Turkish language. Is about <coughs> Suleiman. They are talking totally different. Totally again lie. You know this Islamic yeah. everything lie. Lie, 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 but I want to show this. That's what. Anyway, I don't want to take your time much. Thank no you very problem. much. Maybe to, uh, tomorrow, try to remind me when I am live, and I will get you the reference if we, you know, if we have time. Because tomorrow we will talk about shaitan anyway. So try ah, to be with okay. us, you know. So it's the same topic, uh, and uh, you can ask me. Just remind me about it, and we will show all the reference for this topic. Uh, if I can catch you, because we have different time. It's early morning in, uh, in Russia now. Okay, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> uh, I will try to uh, to remember uh, your question, and uh, I will I will show it. But you know, uh, yeah. uh, you can go right now and you can search on Google. You will find that the Muslim believe that genies they can sleep with, uh, uh, you know, uh, they can sleep with a human. I know, I know, yeah. uh, I know some of these uh, things. I know. That's about Suleiman. I need to take some reference to show me because this is Arabic language. You are translated because I don't understand the Arabic language. If you translate, I see and find and show people. That's what I need. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, my friend. Right. Thank you for calling. Bye. Uh, well, bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Um. There is tons of stories, you know, uh, in in the in the yellow pages of Islamic books.
uh, and the Muslims for sure they try to deny those uh, stories <clears throat> tomorrow our topic is about the shaitan and why he is a Muslim and we will we will uh, good that you remind me actually so we can mention uh, the part which about the shaitan how he was serving Suleiman and how shaitan later they took over the kingdom of Suleiman etc including having sex with his wives do we have any Muslim would like to call last call last call anyone all right guys you see it was 15, 10 minute 15 minute video and look what you did oh boy so I want to say thank you guys for being here I'm glad that I heard uh, uh, Ibrahim uh, a call from Turkey and uh, actually those people they are wonderful people because you see I don't speak Turkish so now he can learn from what I am saying and then he transfer this information to the Turkish language that's perfect that's wonderful and that's why I encourage all people who speak languages to do their part you know you have you have a duty in this life otherwise the world will not get better and nothing will change people still will believe that there is a God who will give me a reward if I kill you it's not about somebody when I kiss a stone and that's it it's about somebody he believed in killing you he go to heaven so don't think this is have nothing to do with you you have a duty those people they believe in killing your children they go they go to heaven killing you destroying your business your house your country they go to heaven so this is not about me or a Christian Prince you have an agenda this is about all of us your economy you know remember when terrorists they had to hit you at your country 9-11 was just by 19 terrorists but almost all airline in America they go bankrupt so imagine how many jobs are lost over one attack so what if it is not 19 it was 19,000 or what if it is 19 million or what it is if it is a million or a billion you, you know they try to fully they say relax and there's nothing wrong they say to you only 10% of Muslims believe in terrorism but if the Muslim today they say as the King of Jordan he claimed that Muslim today is 1.6 billion that means there's 160 million terrorists right now as we speak if they say to us 10% only which is absolutely a big fat lie so if it's only 10% we have 160 million according to Muslim numbers terrorists who wanna willing to die to kill you so don't think that this is a joke don't don't, don't think this is about a person this is about the whole world and the world will never have peace as long as we have religion is called Islam as simple as that thank you very much for being here may the Lord bless you and enter we'll see you tomorrow at 3 30 p.m. New York time this is a Christian Prince I love you all Christ is Lord and Islam is false see you soon again bye-bye take care